How does the decomposition of the body in water take place? How long does it take? And what are the differences compared to a decomposition of a body locked in an underground coffin? The Titan was a small tourist bathyscaphe that disappeared in the waters of the Atlantic Ocean on the morning of June 18, 2023, during a guided expedition to observe what remains of the Titanic well-known British liner that sank on the night between 14 and 15 April 1912, following a collision with an iceberg. In the last video, which you can find by clicking here above, we tried to analyze the two theories about the death of the five passengers of the Titan. Between the hypothesis of a death due to lack of oxygen and that due to an implosion of the bath escape, the latter appeared to be the more probable. On June 29, 2023, the United States Coast Guard says it has recovered presumed human remains from the wreckage of the Bathyscaphe Titan and that they will be analyzed to reconstruct the dynamics of the accident and prevent a similar tragedy from happening again. While waiting for further updates on the entity of the remains found and on the results of the analyses, let's try to understand what happens to a human body at the bottom of the sea. How does the decomposition of the body in water take place? How long does it take, and what cadaveric phenomena occur as the days go by? What are the differences compared to a decomposition of a body locked in an underground coffin? Let's try to answer all these questions, and we will also do so thanks to an extraordinary report published by the coroner and forensic pathologist Michele Samichele. In this video, for simplicity and to give a general idea, we will consider an intact human body, although in the case of the passengers of the Titan, there is probably a pile of ash left. However, regardless of the cause of death, there is a real sequence in which the various cadaveric phenomena occur in a corpse immersed in water. However, the post-mortem submersion interval, that is the time between entry into the water and the recovery of the quartz, is influenced by some factors related to the aquatic environment in which the body is immersed, as well as the season, the type of climate, and the geographical area in which it is located. Within 15 to 20 minutes after death, pallor mortis occurs. This is the first visible change in the body, and refers to the pallor that the body takes on after the blood circulation has stopped. Subsequently, the corpse undergoes the so-called classical triad. Algor mortis, also known as cadaveric cooling, occurs in the first hours after death, a physical biological process in which there is a progressive reduction in body temperature following the arrest of heat production by the body. In general, a corpse in water decomposes more slowly than in the open air, but there are some factors that we must take into consideration, such as the composition and temperature of the water. In hot, tepid or stagnant water, decomposition is faster than in cold or salt water, where instead colder temperatures, or the presence of salt, slow down bacterial activity, resulting in a slower decomposition process. In the case of the North Atlantic Ocean, for example, where the bodies of the five passengers of the Titan or what remains of their bodies are located, the temperature varies between 35.6 and 39.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Thanks to some studies on the influence of the aquatic environment on postmortem thermal dispersion, it has been discovered that a naked body in water cools down at a speed equal to twice that which it would have if exposed to air, but as moving away from the time of death, this speed is reduced. The clothing, even if wet, slows down the temporal evolution of the algor mortis in a similar way to what happens in the equally dressed corpse exposed to the air. After the algor mortis, rigor mortis appears. It is a post-mortem stiffening of the voluntary and involuntary muscles of the body, which generally begins in the jaw and then spreads to the lower limbs. In general, we can say that cold and running waters tend to slow down the evolution of rigor mortis more markedly than waters that have higher temperatures or stagnant waters. Finally appears the livor mortis, also known as cadaveric hypostasis. It is a discoloration of the body due to blood stasis, which is no longer pumped by the heart and which is slowly deposited by gravity in the lower part of the body. 
Thus, pink or light red hypostatic patches are formed, as the skin humidity due to the immersion of the body in water facilitates the oxygenation of hemoglobin through the skin. At the end of this classic triad, composed of alger, rigor, and liver mortis, the first processes of decomposition of the body begin, such as putrefaction. The corpse, therefore, tends to remain on the bottom until the putrefactive phenomena in their gaseous phase become such as to make the body re-emerge. This is because the gases released during the degradation and decomposition of tissue by enzymes and bacteria inflate the corpse like a balloon. In shallow water, the corpse may resurface after two-thirds days, while in water 100 feet deep or more, they may never resurface, as the weight of the water prevents the gases from expanding and thus their bodies from rising to the surface. Now think of the bodies of the five passengers of the Titan, located almost 12,500 feet below sea level, where not even light can reach those depths, thus leaving room for total and permanent darkness. When a corpse is found in water, in particular in fresh water, or in any case in humid environments, the normal processes of putrefaction slow down and combine with the processes of maceration, a destructive cadaveric phenomenon, which occurs especially in drowned corpses or in the case of the dead fetus inside the maternal uterus, immersed in the amniotic fluid. Maceration begins from the ends of the upper and lower limbs, or in any case from the uncovered areas of the body, such as the head, or in the sites of intense hypostatic phenomenon. Initially whitening and a slight wrinkling of the fingertips occurs, which after a few hours of permanence in the water extends to the fingers, palms of the hands, and soles of the feet. Think about how your hands become when you go to the pool or after a long relaxing bath. Now imagine how a body left underwater for weeks or months can become. The skin becomes increasingly wrinkled and the stratum corneum, soaked in water, tends to increase in volume. From the fingers and toes, the macerative phenomenon extends to the rest of the limb. There is talk of washerwoman's skin, a term used in forensic medicine to describe skin changes in corpses found in water. Within a few days, the macerated skin tends to detach partially until it reaches a complete detachment. After a few months, if the maceration lasts a long time and the body is not pulled out of the water, regardless of the causes of death, saponification takes place, a transformative cadaveric process of a conservative type. It manifests itself with the formation of a whitish mass with the typical smell of rancid cheese called adiposera. The process starts from the subcutaneous tissue and occurs following the chemical transformation of body fat by the anaerobic bacteria contained within it. The immersion of a body in water makes it an appetizing feast for numerous aquatic animals. However, in the case of the bodies of the Titan's passengers, located at a depth of 12,500 feet, the lack of oxygen and the extreme hydrostatic pressure make the area inhospitable to most plant and animal life forms. We are in that area of the ocean between 3,280 feet and 13,123 feet called the bathypelagic zone or midnight zone due to the lack of sunlight. Skeletonization is the last phase of decomposition and consists in the disintegration of all the soft tissues and in the consequent exposure of the bones. It is not due to the action of bacteria, but to that of acids found in the environment. If the body is buried inside a coffin, skeletonization occurs in about 10 15 years. In water, however, this process is up to four times faster. In an effort to better understand how human corpses decompose hundreds of feet underwater, in 2016, forensic scientists at Simon Fraser University, a Canadian public university located in British Columbia, conducted a first-of-its-kind study. The research team placed the carcasses of pigs, animals that are very similar to humans in size and organ physiology, in metal cages and then immersed them to a depth of 984 feet, where they were constantly observed and monitored by video cameras and remote control tools. The study found that in just three to four days, the remains of the pigs were colonized by a colony of sea lice, which feeding from the inside out reduced them to a pile of bones. 
We have therefore seen that there is a real sequence in which the various cadaveric processes occur in a body immersed in water, and that they are different from those that occur in a body buried in an underground coffin.